Hello and welcome. Today I would like to compare the new Neural Filter Skin Smoothing that is included with Photoshop 2021. For the last several years, I have used Imaginomic Portraiture for all of my skin smoothing. Portraiture 3 claims to have AI capabilities, but I still find myself masking the smoothing effect off of unwanted areas. So I have this picture of myself and we are going to get in invasively close to my face and compare the two skin smoothing technologies. We'll make two new layers. We will name this one portraiture and this one neural filter skin smoothing. Turn that one off for now. So let's go into portraiture. And I'm just going to use the default normal settings with the auto mask because I feel that the auto mask is the true test of Portraiture 3's AI capabilities. Go ahead and run that. And we're done. So that is a before and after of Portraiture. So let's go into the neural filter skin smoothing layer. So we're going to go into Neural Filter and turn on the Skin Smoothing Filter. And we're going to leave it at the default settings so that we can get an accurate comparison between that and Portraiture at their default settings. I'll put to current layer. All right, so this is the Neural Filter before and after. And then we can do a comparison of the two. So neural filter versus portraiture. So as you can see with the portraiture layer, the smoothing effect went on everything. We don't want smoothing effects on hair and clothes. We just want it on the face. What I would normally do is add a layer mask and mask it on to only where I want the skin smoothing effect. That's an extra step that I take with every single photo that I edit. And while I don't mind that extra step because it gives me you know, ultimate control of where the skin smoothing goes, I did expect the artificial intelligence in Portraiture 3 to kind of do that for me. And since it's never done that, I've just gotten used to masking it on and off as needed. With the neural filter, we'll turn that on and off. That's the before, this is the after. I don't see the skin smoothing happening on any pieces of hair. And if you get in really invasively close, you can see that it's not smoothing any of the eyeballs. It's not smoothing lips. It's staying just on the face. Now I would personally mask it off the nose a little bit if it were me, but other than that, it does a great job of detecting facial features and skin tones. And it actually even corrects the skin tone slightly because you can see there's a little bit of slight redness in the nose area. And with the neural filter, it has evened that out just ever so slightly. I think that's great. I don't know if they did that intentionally or if I'm just imagining things. <laughs> so anyway, with portraiture, it does beautiful smoothing. Don't get me wrong. I love it. But I don't see any color changes in this slight redness in that area. So my initial reaction is that the neural filter addition to Photoshop is amazing and I can't wait to see how it performs on everyday shoots for, uh, well, I specialize in newborns, so I will be trying it out on newborn images as well. That's it for today. I will throw up a side-by-side uh, -side comparison of these three so you guys can see. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. 
I am really excited about the new features being added in to Photoshop 2021, and I can't wait to see what else they bring us. And thanks for watching. Like this video if it was helpful, and subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. See you later!